Hey everyone, it is part two of the Painted Hutch. Getting ready to paint a coat of the General Finishes Buttermilk Yellow over the top of this navy blue. A lot of that blue after this first coat, you're gonna be able to see that through the yellow. A lot of brush strokes and things like that. But with that second coat, it's gonna cover it up really nicely so that you're gonna be able to, you're gonna have that buttery, creamy yellow color coming through. We'll go ahead and get started with painting that second coat on and you'll be able to see that difference right away. Here we go. I want to paint a top of a drawer kind of slowly and up close so that you can see that difference with that paint color as it goes on. Here we go. We'll go ahead and start to add that yellow. And you know what? It's really covering, surprisingly, a lot better than I thought that it would. So we'll just put that right over the top of that blue. Cover up all of those edges. You can see some of those brush strokes coming through, like I said, but when we do that second coat, it is going to completely cover that up. Just again, watch for those drips. I noticed that I do have a little bit of a drip on the bottom part of the hutch over here, but that is totally fine. All you have to do is just make sure that you're really conscious of that when you are getting ready to sand and just sand that part really well. Now the other thing with this, I will have to double check with Cindy and see what she wants me to do with those knobs, we really didn't talk about it. There are a lot of different things that you can do with the knobs. You can either spray paint them a different color or, or get whole new knobs. I, I am sure that Hobby Lobby has some super cute knobs that we can use on this. First coat of yellow on this one. I'll go get that other drawer. You can see the difference between that, that one. I have a feeling that that top coat is probably what helped that to cover so well having that top coat of the finisher, but we'll do another one on this one and then we'll get started with the hutch and I will let you watch that process. It is the end of the yellow painting day and I have the second coat on here. You can see that there are still some streak streaky spots where that blue paint is coming through, but that's okay. Those are gonna be the spots that we'll sand and it'll make it a little bit easier for us to see things a little bit better. When I did that second coat of paint, I put it on a little bit heavy and I made sure to try and do as few brush strokes as possible because it kind of counteracts and goes back, takes some of that paint off that we have just put on. Just be extra careful with that. Once that paint dries, if there are some spots that you see the bluer coming through, you can go back through those. I can't wait to let this dry so that we can start our sanding process tomorrow. I just think that it's going to be gorgeous. We also decided to paint the inside. That blue is just so dark that I think with this buttery yellow that it's gonna look a lot prettier without that dark contrast in the background, just little hints of the contrast instead. We will let this dry really well overnight. I got the second coat on the cupboard doors and the drawers. We're also gonna put just one single coat of that yellow on the back sides so it gives a little bit of that color. We didn't worry so much with the navy because those sides won't be distressed. So today is my favorite part of finishing any project wall next to putting a new color on something and then adding the top coat to shine everything up. But sanding day, so I really love all of it. But sanding day is one of my favorite days because what we get to do is 
sand to start distressing and adding character to really bring out the uh, fun parts of the piece. We kind of sand. I just really say just go with whatever you want to do. Start small if you want, start big, whatever you feel like. I just always go along all of the edges, all of the parts where there's a lot of character, like along this part right here. These curved edges, you'll be able to see those in a second, but the curved edges at the bottom of this piece, anything where there's a lot of, where you can bring out that character. So we'll just kind of start sanding, see as we go along what we like. Two different things that I like to use for this. These sanding sponges work wonderfully. It kind of keeps you from, I don't know, the paper always kind of bends up a little bit. So these are a little bit nicer for a lot of the edges. When you do into smaller spaces, it's kind of nice to have that paper because it's a little bit more flexible. But I really like these sponges too. They're a 220 grit sandpaper. And then I also have this sandpaper too that's a 220 grit. One sheet you can cut up into six different pieces. I just make a really small piece to get started with things and then um, and then we go from there. So what we'll do, I'll kind of get a little bit closer up on the top part of the hutch here so that you can see things really well and then we'll get started with sanding that. I have a close up here of the hutch. What we're gonna start doing is sanding all of those edges. Just wherever you wanna start, there is no rhyme or reason to it. There is no right way, there's no wrong way. And just dig in and get started. So we'll just kind of go right along the top of this. Just kind of back and forth. Don't go too crazy. And right in here, that rich navy. This is going, it's going to be time consuming, but it's going to be a lot of fun too. I'm really excited to see how this looks once we start getting that, that navy blue poking through. Oh, this is super cute. So I'll kind of pan in a little bit closer. You can see right here where all of that navy's coming through. There's a little bit of that wood grain that pokes through too, and that is totally fine. This is going to be absolutely adorable. I wanna go down and get this edge really quickly and then we'll kind of start speeding up the process just a little bit here. And you'll notice when you start to do this also that it kind of starts to put on the areas that you have sanded, you'll kind of get a little bit of a hazy area over that paint where you've sanded it. As compared to the rest of the paint tone, no worries about that. Don't be worried about that at all because once you put the top coat on over the top of it, it's gonna even all of that out and you won't notice it at all. but I'll speed up the process a little bit from here. Pan out a little bit, you'll be able to see as things start to transform with this piece. I would bring you inside where it's a little bit cooler into the air conditioning to distress the cupboard door so that you can see these in a little bit better light too. So I'm going to just go along with the edges on the cupboard here just really lightly. Kind of wipe that dust off as you go along so you can see exactly what you're doing and your work. That dust kind of starts to build up after a bit. It makes it a little bit hard to see. This is really going to bring the detail out in these cupboards and make them more dimensional. If you get down to the wood grain in spots, it is perfectly fine. I'll just kind of sand a little bit harder 
on the front there, bring a little bit more of that blue out. You just kind of go as you want. You'll see that there are some brush strokes on here too, and that's okay also. It kind of helps with the dimension of this door front. really bringing a lot of that navy out in the lower part of this drawer or the door and it just really as I said adds dimension and just makes that so cute we do want to keep it kind of congruent with the way that the rest of the hutch looks you don't want the doors to be super distressed and then have the rest of it really lightly so. But you know what? It's your piece and you do whatever you want with it. You can see all of my lines in my in my tarp here from previous projects that I've had. This is usually my tarp that I do my chalkboards on. It's my tapestry of previous work. There is one drawer or door front some of that dust off. Super cute. We will get to work on the other three. done with painting and sanding everything everything is distressed I've gotten just a plain coat of uh, yellow paint on the back of these cupboard doors they're on the inside so you're really not going to notice them as much so I am going to add my first coat of the top coat on top of all of the paint the finished work now you are gonna see pretty quickly how much this shines it up. You might notice some cloudy areas through here, but just as we start to apply this, you'll start to notice it add that shine. Now I know this is gonna seem kind of weird that I'm going across like this, but I think that it's gonna be the best way to get the top of that in a pretty even coat. And then we're gonna take this little brush and get into where all of those little nooks and crannies are. hardware on the top doors. Not a big fan. I have found these knobs and I'm going to use these instead. I've decided I'm going to try to match this with a satin finish spray paint. As I've talked about a little bit earlier, we're going to go ahead and just do that and spray paint all of the hardware. You want to make sure not to forget the hinges, all of the knobs that you're going to be using. Of course, we don't have to do these, but I will put a coat on this. When you spray it on, shake it up really well. Just Rust-Oleum, this is more of a satin finish. Really carefully, just kind of slowly side to side, don't let it cake up too much. One quick little coat like that. And 
Now, for some reason with the hinges, I always have a hard time figuring out which side is going to be visible. And inevitably, I always end up doing the wrong side. This time, I am going to do both sides. Now we'll do these holes here. And I know you're gonna say you're not a big fan of those, but after you put a little coat of paint on them, they end up turning out beautiful. We will let these dry and set them aside, come back in. I'll give them another quick coat in the morning. Hinges are probably fine. I'll flip those over, do the other side. These will want to raise that little knocker part up so that we can spray underneath there. But then we're gonna be finished with this tomorrow. All of the hardware has had all night to dry, and here is the pull that we did. You can see it's completely coated with the exception of a few little spots under here, but what we'll do is just turn this handle up, give it one more quick spray across, and then we will be done this morning. We'll switch these hinges over and do another spray on them, but it coats super nicely. One coat really is all that you need. So we'll just turn these over, do one more, Quick spray, uh, give those a couple of hours to dry. Like I said, this hutch is gonna be done today. What I need to do today, we've put that one coat of the top coat, uh, the general finishes top coat on the hutch. We are going to sand just a little bit. You like to sand a little bit in between coats to make sure that that uh, sealant has something to adhere to. We're gonna do that twice today. The nice thing about this sealant is that it dries really quickly within a couple of hours. So we're gonna do two more coats of that today. We have the hardware all uh, spray painted black. Once everything's dry, we'll be able to reassemble and we should be done by the end of the day. So I'm very excited to get this piece all put together. We'll just take that 220 grit sandpaper. You can even use something even finer than this if you want to. It's very light sanding, just to kind of rough that up just a little bit. We'll just lightly go over that. Just rough it up a little bit. Now when I use the polyurethane, I haven't always sanded in between coats and everything has been just fine. It adheres great. I haven't had any trouble, but we're going to just do that today since we are doing this for Cindy. Make everything look good. Make sure that stays on there nicely. Especially on those surfaces where she's going to be putting things. If she wants to put plants in here or anything like that, we wanna make sure that that wood is protected so she doesn't get any stains or anything like that on it. These surfaces, not such a huge deal. Chances of water damage in these areas is pretty slim. Get the tops of those dressers, and the uh, drawers. We'll just wipe these off with a rag. Make sure all of those surfaces are dust free. We're ready to get started with that second coat of the top coat and we'll be done in just a minute. The second coat of sealant is done. We are gonna let this dry for a couple of hours and then I'll come back and do one more. I think on most of the surfaces, it's gonna be okay just to do the two, but all of the uh, flat surfaces, the shelving and the top of the lower buffet part of the hutch, I'm going to do a third coat on those just to make sure that they're good and sturdy. The drawer fronts and on the door fronts as well, I will add a third coat. Those are the areas where they get used a little bit more, things opening and closing, a lot more hand traffic, cleaned off a lot more often. We'll not want to make sure that those areas are good and protected. So we'll let this dry for a couple of hours and then come back and do the last coat. We'll be back in a couple of hours. Everything is done and it's time to put those drawer pulls back on. Let's go ahead and these have the little holes in the back that fit into these holes in the dresser. So we're just gonna fit them right back in here. Now sometimes if they don't fit just right, each one can be a little bit different. Holes in each drawer can be kind of drilled a little bit differently too. There are holes in the back. We'll just screw these in here. And then 
then today I have my power drill. That's gonna make it a little bit easier. We will get both of these ready to go, turn the dressers upright, and then use the power drill to drill these back in. Those are pretty darn cute. I can't wait until we are all done and have it all back together so that we can see how it looks. It is also time to put the hinges. I always have to hold them up so that I know that I'm putting them back on the right way. They can be a little bit confusing. Also, make sure that you have a cloth underneath or underneath your cupboard door so that you don't worry about getting scratches on the front of that paint that you just finished. It shouldn't do that with all of your sealant on the top of there, but just to be safe. There is our door all done and ready to go.